Kyrie Irving trade has been finally officially completed. I know we talked about it last week that we talked about the Kyrie Irving trade last week, but it hasn't really gone through officially. But now it is now complete. Kyrie Irving is sent to Boston for Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, Anti Zigzig, a first round pick 2018 unprotected, and another second round 2020 pick sent to Cleveland Cavaliers. So what do you guys think of this? Finally, this trade has been uh, officially completed. So give me your thoughts on the trade. Well, on paper, like, it looks, that, it looks like um, Cleveland won because they got more assets. Mm -hmm. But on paper, like both teams, to me, it looks like they're building for the future. Because when you look at Cleveland, they got Kyrie. Him and Isaiah Thomas, they're pretty much the same player, like scoring point guards. They do whatever with the rock. No one could take it from them. But yeah, Kyrie's a few years younger than IT. But then, yeah, when you look what Cleveland got, they got those picks, they got the anti Zijish guy, and they got Jay Crowder. So they got younger with that too. But also, in reality, I think Cleveland won because uh, Jay Crowder made the deal for me. Because on Boston, Jay Crowder is the only guy that could like kind of guard LeBron. Not, not really stop him because no one could really do that, but uh -huh. he could really like, make life hard for him. And now that Crowder's gone, Boston don't have anybody to do that. So you're saying like, you know, having Jay Crowder there would be mostly the bigger impact on that, big, on that trade. Yeah. So and what are your thoughts? Because Isaiah Thomas, uh, Cleveland was pretty worried about how this trade was going to go down because Isaiah Thomas still has that hip injury. That's why they waited a long time to get, make sure the, um, the checkouts were okay, he was feeling okay, and making sure if this trade goes through, we're going to probably think of a long term or even is it even worth it to have Isaiah Thomas or even have more? Because that's, that's why they got the, another pick. Well, I want to call out actually Cleveland for this because I think that they, um, it, it's their job to do that due diligence in terms of checking. So I, I want to call them out because I think that's, um, they should have done all that thing before they even, you know, that trade, uh, that original trade went through because if they have, would have done that, you know, all that things that, you know, checking the physical, making sure, or checking really Isaiah Thomas' status in terms of injury, they wouldn't have to go and make it even more complicated than it is, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's odd to Cleveland. Maybe it's something that they pulled on, kind of like a game that they play. Hey, we wanted to go through this, and then we found, oh wait, it's not as bad. It's worse than what we think about Isaiah. We want, we want more, right? Maybe it's the kind of game that they played. So I kind of want to call out Cleveland for that. But I still think that Boston won this because, for them, to be willing to, you know, they just added a twenty, you know, a second round pick just to get Kyrie. That still tells a lot about how much they really know about Isaiah's injury. Right, because if they're willing, hey, we're gonna give you more. They didn't even like you know make it harder than it is, even though they they, they said that we're not giving you a first round, but we'll give you a second round. That tells more that they know exactly um, what's happened. Like, either they know what's you know how the severity of Isaiah's injury, or they know the fact that um, Isaiah has that kind of personality that you know he might have taken it personal that hey, you traded me, I'm not coming back here, mm -hmm. or the fact that you don't they don't really want to go through you know. A bunch of hassle just to get yeah. all their players back and just say hey no we're gonna get Kyrie for it because I think that to get the best player of the deal it's still to me uh, the way to go because they're just a couple a superstar away really to be a right. contending team right I know you touched upon it do you think do you think Cleveland should be worried that if even if Isaiah Thomas hip injury really does matter I mean they still have Derek Rose that might be even their starting point guard if Isaiah Thomas uh, hip injury gets serious. Do you, should Cleveland be worried about uh, uh, like the injury like that? Like they should be a bit, yeah. Like depending on the severity of it. But yeah, Derrick Rose. I don't know that. That's one of my favorite players. Though, I can't lie. Yeah. Like back then, Chicago days. He was. But he MVP was nasty. Days. Yeah. He was just nah. But yeah, like on social media and all that, he's saying like he's he could still ball, and I just hope to see that if he could bring it to Cleveland. So and now turning out to Boston, uh, Carey and is going to be joining with Gordon here with Jalen Brown. Al Horford and Marquise Morris. Um, what do you guys think they're going to make it uh, a, a good contention against the Cleveland Cavaliers? Yeah, I think they will. They have a they have a versatile lineup, just as versatile as Cleveland's. But yeah, just see how quickly Kyrie can mesh and Hayward can mesh with the rest of those guys after coming in. Yeah, my only concern is that I think that uh, if you really look at the core right now, what Boston is, mm -hmm. they've completely changed their identity and like. Their identity was that hard-nosed, tough defense, yeah. and they've lost two of the, you know, their six, you know, what made their identity what it is. Well, three now with Isaiah, not just defensive, but the fact that Isaiah was tough, and Isaiah was the kind of like the kind of player that will go at you, that would, you know, that would challenge anybody on the offensive. And 
well as uh, Avery Bradley and, uh, and Crowder did it on the defensive end. That was kind of their identity, Boston's identity, when they had those three players. And now, if you look at their core and look at what they have, it's a completely new identity. So that's something that I think they still need to look at. What is their identity now? Yeah. Because it's completely different than what it was last year. It's not that hard-nosed, tough defense. I, I know Brad, Brad Stevens may have, you know, may pull something through, but it's it's going to change because they lost the main two defensive anchor, yeah. really, that, you know, that solidified how they were, how they played defensively. And then they took out their main offense, you know, how it, everything ran through Isaiah. So that's something that they need to figure out because now they have Hayward and they have Kyrie, who's new. Both of them are new, yeah. completely new. And then now they have, they have a rookie uh, with Jason Tatum. And then now they have a bunch of, you know, role players that's mm-hmm. going to see how they're going to play against these new players that they have. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Um, and then I want to talk to uh, Mark about do you, do you think with Cleveland having this many, you know, um, people on their team now, I mean, new, new players, do you think LeBron James uh, might potentially leave? Because I know we've been talking about other people, but I want to get your opinion. Do you think LeBron James would leave next year? Next year? I don't know. It's still like because he did get Cleveland a ring, and I don't know if he still wants more rings probably, but... I know he wants to. I think it all depends on how this season plays out and how far they make it for me. Okay. I don't think he's staying. No. <laughs> just because if you really look at the core of what they have right now, they just got even older if you think about it, <laughs> right? Derrick Rose is on his wrong side of 30. Uh, Isaiah is about to hit 30. And um, I don't think he's, he's going to want to have want to play with an 18 and 19 year old that has no experience in the NBA. Right, that was one of the reasons why he wanted uh, to get Kevin Love as opposed to Andrew Wiggins, right? Mm-hmm. And he's getting, he's just, he's getting older and older. He's, he's at the stage of his career where he's more focused on how to preserve his career, you know, how to prolong his career, you know, where he, everything, uh, you know, and the team does not depend on how he plays and how many minutes he plays and how, how really hard he plays, right? Because he's getting older. Right? He, you know, sometimes um, you're, you know, the father of time that just hits really quickly. Look what happened to Kobe. Right before he had the injury, he was like mm-hmm. dominant until that one little injury, and after that, years and years, he just couldn't play. Right, and I think I think LeBron is a smarter player than than Kobe was in terms of his health. So I think he's gonna leave. Right. So we'll have to see and wait because the NBA season is very coming very very soon. So hopefully we'll get to see that and see the exciting matchups, especially on that first opening day. Boston will be taking on Cleveland Cavaliers first time. Kyrie Irving on his new team facing on his old team with LeBron James. So we'll have to see it for that. It's gonna be a very exciting season.